I've recently come to the realization and the conclusion that so many people read the Bible incorrectly because we do not understand this very, very important truth. And it surrounds the topic of the different judgments the Bible talks about. You know, personally, growing up, I'll admit, I never put a whole lot of thought into this. I thought there was only one judgment, which is the one in Revelation 20, the great white throne. I just imagined it as this long line of people and we're all waiting and the Lamb's book of life is open and either yes, we get into heaven or no, we are denied and we do not get into heaven. And that's what I thought happened when we died. And that was it. And little did I know and realize how this was influencing how I read scripture and how it brought confusion to different things. I mean, does the Bible contradict itself? One minute it's talking about being saved by grace through faith and not of works, but then other passages say we're being judged by our works, whether good or evil. So how does all this work together? And I didn't really understand that. So today I want to talk about the three different judgments that are mentioned in the Bible. There's one in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the judgment seat of Christ. There is one mentioned in in Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne of judgment, which most of us are probably familiar with. And then Jesus even mentions one in Matthew chapter 25. So are all these judgments the same or are they three different judgments or are some of them the same? That's what we're going to talk about here in this video today. And I want to start with the judgment seat of Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Starting in verse 10, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Now, at first glance, you might look at this and say, oh, my salvation is being judged based on whether I did good or whether I did bad. But what Paul is actually talking about here is this is the judgment seat of Christ where Jesus is going to determine what our reward is based on our works in heaven. This is not about our salvation. This is about rewards. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul also talks about it here, starting in verse 10. He says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. Someone else is building on it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. Meaning what? We have a choice. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So that is the constant between all of us. Jesus has to be the foundation, meaning we have to be saved. We have to be in Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest. For the day, and that's capitalized for a reason, will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So obviously, Paul is talking about reward in this particular passage. And he says the day will disclose it. What day? the judgment seat of Christ, the day that we go before this judgment to determine what reward we will receive. Jesus also mentions this in Revelation chapter 22. Behold, I'm coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. This word right here means a wage. So either for good, you're going to get a reward for bad, which we saw in 1 Corinthians 3, everything's going to be burned up and you're going to gain nothing. So this can be a reward or a punishment based on what your deeds were. It's like a payment. It's a wage. So whatever you did, that's what you're going to be paid for. The judgment seat of Christ is also where our intentions, our motives, all of these different things are going to be judged. Do you remember where Jesus said that we'll be judged for every careless word we speak? So we're going to be judged for our words. We're going to be judged for our thoughts and our intentions and our motives, why we did certain things. All of this is going to happen at the judgment seat of Christ. And this determines not our salvation in Jesus, but our reward. Now, I hope you're already seeing how this determines how we read scripture, because it's possible to read some of these scriptures and think that we're being judged according to our works. And that determines if we're saved or if we're not. Now, look at Revelation chapter 20. We have the great white throne of judgment. This is the one most people are probably familiar with. Starting in verse 11, he says, then I saw a great white throne 
throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Then another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So this is the great white throne of judgment. I always thought that this was the one and only judgment that we would face. Now, I will say this. There is a school of thought, and many people believe that this judgment is only for people that are not Christians, that are outside of Christ, non-believers, and that Christians are only going to face the judgment seat of Christ, and then this is for non-believers. Then there's people who believe that Christians are going to face both. We're going to go before the great white throne, and that's all people, and then also we're going to go before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. So there are different schools of thought there. And I want to make you aware of that. I'm not here to get into all of that and which is right and which is wrong, but I did want to make you aware of that. Then we have the judgment Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 25. He says the final judgment says the subtitle here. When the son of man comes in his glory and all of his angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Say that five times fast. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then we know the goats, he separates on his left, right? So he separates them both. And then he says this, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So what is Jesus talking about here? He's talking about believers on one side, non-believers on another. The ones that are going to go to heaven, the ones that are not going to go to heaven. So a lot of people believe that this is the same as Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne of judgment. Then others believe this is the judgment of the nations, that there's actually going to be three different judgments happen. I thought it was so important to point this out because it truly changes the way we read the Bible, especially if you did not know this. It changes how you see scripture. Some scriptures seemingly contradict themselves if you don't know this. But look at 2 Corinthians 5 again, when Paul talks about, for we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, right? This is based on reward. We're being judged for our reward. He says, therefore, meaning look at the scripture before, because we're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. So this reward is going to have some sort of weight in heaven that I don't think we fully comprehend here on earth. I don't think we fully understand it. And you've got people out there saying, well, I don't really care. You know, if I get a whole lot of rewards in heaven, I just want to make it in the door. I just want to get there. First Corinthians chapter three says it's up to us. You know, it's up to us what material we build our house out of. As long as the foundation is Jesus Christ, it's up to our free will that the Lord allows us. And I believe it comes down to surrender. This is just my own personal thought. This is my own personal opinion. I think it comes down to how much are we surrendered before the Lord? How much do we spend our life thinking about eternal things and fixing our mind on things above and not beneath? How much do we spend our life living for the the kingdom of God, going and making disciples, loving others as ourselves. How much of our time, how much are we actually in love with the person of Jesus and in pursuit of him versus making our best life now here on earth. I really hope this helped you out today. If you didn't know about the different judgments the Bible talks about, I would really love to hear your thoughts and what you believe. Do you think any of these judgments are the same? Do you think there are three different judgments? Let me know what you think in the comments section. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it and hit the thumbs up button. That's the like button that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people so they can hear this message. But I really appreciate you taking your time today to watch this video and I will see you in the next one.